the 1978 Circuit of Ireland, and last year's winner, Russell Brooks, leads the field away from the Belfast start. Three, two, one, go. Car four is Finland's Hannu Mikkola. Now in his 11th year as a works escort driver, Britain's Roger Clark. And Billy Coleman, hero of all Ireland, is back at the wheel of the Lancia Stratos. The first day, and Brooks is determined to win the circuit again. Coleman completes less than a dozen stages before finally retiring mid-stage with a burnt-out clutch. Mikola, driving with a sticking throttle, loses more than 10 minutes when he slides over a bank. Also having throttle trouble, Russell Brooks has to operate his car from under the bonnet, whilst co-driver John Brown does the steering. The special stages are meant to be closed to all normal traffic, but this Irish farmer doesn't seem to have got the message, much to the annoyance of Marco Elaine in the works Fiat. <laughs> Roger Clark is holding fifth place after the first night. Brooks is now storming through the field after his early troubles. Pentia Ricola, despite his brake problems, holds fourth place. The village of Kilmakilligi Harbour is typical of the scenic stages of the famous Sunday run through Kerry. Russell Brooks proves unbeatable here and snatches the lead from McRae's Chevette. Elaine finds these stages hard work. Although he led the early part of the rally, he now dropped to third. Clark inherits fourth place when Auricola retires, and the English driver now sets out after Elaine. Brian Nelson has trouble with an enthusiastic spectator. Brooks now has a commanding lead, but he's obviously feeling the pressure. In his efforts to grab first place, teammate Clark gets quicker and quicker. He's fastest on 11 of the last 14 stages. Rally leader for two days, Jimmy McRae, also begins to make mistakes. So does John Lyons. Brooks wins from McRae. Alain and Clark. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Yeah. Get, get How do you feel to win it two years running? Oh, absolutely super. I mean, this year's rally was incredibly tough. Uh, you know, and even just to get here is very welcoming, but to win it as well is a sort of double pleasure. It really was a very, very tough event. Thanks for coming on. Back in mainland Britain, 250 miles of Welsh forests await Pentia Ricola's Vauxhall Chevette. A confident Hanu Mikola leaves the Cardiff start and immediately sets the pace. Russell Brooks is close behind the Flying Finn in his similar Ford Escort. Marco Elaine seems intent on redesigning his Fiat. Okay. I thought you'd like to have those first for me, yeah. I know you would. Thank you, Mr. Hinchley. Thank you. I knocked this in there. You're in the jumps. Yeah. Yeah. As the rally moves into the magnificent flowing forests of central Wales, Clark begins to catch Elaine's Fiat. But it's Mikola who's totally in control, leading by over two minutes. Clark moves up to second, making it a Ford 1-2. Hanu's only problem so far is a missing rear window. 
Roger is having a tremendous run, setting times that only Mikola can beat. Brooks is trying to make up time after suffering a blown tyre and losing eight minutes. The final four stages are on the daunting tarmac roads of the Epint military ranges, where Clark continues to pull away from the Fiat. Beating even Mikola on the last stage, Brooks completes a climb through the field into fifth place. But the rally belongs to Hanu Mikola and Arna Hertz. Oh, no. okay. He's <laughs> And off goes Russell. Russell Brooks leaves the Aviemore start of the Scottish Rally. Marku Elaine has come straight from the Acropolis Rally and starts the Scottish feeling very tired. Still struggling with the new Vauxhall engine specification, Jimmy McRae is obviously keen to do well on home ground. Clark is fighting for second place behind the flying Mikola. Tony Pond finds the TR7 hard work in the bumpy Scottish forests. That's what I was saying to you. What is, is it that what's doing it? Is the car kicking into a corner? Yes. It was, but it was the front end that was doing it then, and it's still doing it now. That's what you're saying. Yeah, what happens? You go, you turn the corner, and you feel the back sort of go... The tired Elaine catches up on his sleep whilst the Fiat mechanics work. Leyland seem to have troubles of their own. Pond's TR7 refuses to start. Russell Brooks' chance of victory is gone when he drops to 13th position following a short excursion. Roger Clark has also been off, dropping him into 6th place. It wasn't a particularly hairy crash, all we did was just slide sideways into a very muddy ditch. Uh, we couldn't get any traction to drive out and we were stuck there. There was no mechanical damage to the car whatsoever. Uh, and in fact, we weren't even more than a foot off the road. As little as that? Yes, that's all. How did you get out? Uh, we were incredibly fortunate. Andy Dawson in his Datsun uh, has not had a particularly happy rally. Uh, and he stopped and towed us out. Uh, to the cost of about two or three minutes to himself, which I think is very, very generous and very sporting. Mikola now leads by a comfortable eight seconds. Clark pulls back enough to finish third, whilst Brooks climbs back to take seventh place. Having led from start to finish, Mikola wins the Scottish in impressive style. <laughs> Hanu Mikola starts the Burma International with a new sponsor, Eaton's Yale Lift Trucks. With Marku Alain away in Finland practicing for the Thousand Lakes Rally, the German ace Walter Roll gets a drive in the works Fiat. The winner of this event last year, Mikola again sets the early pace. Fiat are using this event to test new twin compound Pirelli tyres, which they plan to use on the RAC rally. Works Vauxhall driver Chris Slater is back in an escort for this event. Clark tackles the first of three tarmac stages in Glasgow's Bella Houston Park. Mikola makes a rare mistake on stage nine and drops to fourth place. The new rally leader is Russell Brooks. As the rain continues to team down, the rally moves into the classic forests of Argyllshire. The young Australian driver, Greg Carr, is setting regular top ten times on his first ever British rally. 
I just say? He reckoned that Britain was going to sink shortly with all this rain. So what do you make of all this rain then, Hanu? Oh, this is quite normal in this country. So what sort of night have you had then, Roger? Well, everything I possess is wet. <laughs> it's been torrential the whole night. Um, the forests are awash and even with the narrowest tyres on we've got, the skeletal plane he demonstrates. Hard work. As the two-day rally draws to a close, Mikola is catching the leaders. Walter Rawl finds the new Pirellis less than satisfactory in the prevailing conditions, and his Fiat drops out of the battle for the lead. Clark's Dunlop seem better suited to the saturated forests, and he moves past the Fiat. Russell Brooks still leads the Burma. The last stage is just four miles long, and he starts it 13 seconds ahead of Mikola. Surprising most of the regular drivers, Greg Carr finishes in sixth place and takes the Man of the Rally Award. What's, what's going wrong? Oh, when we had an ignition pack go, and it cost us a minute and six seconds to have it. What's that mean then? Um, depends on whose edition of time you use, but either Hanu's won by a second, we won by a second, or as we think, uh, it's a tie. And if it's a tie, Hanu wins on the tiebreaker. So Hanu, you've just been officially confirmed the winner. How do you feel? Oh, I'm very surprised. I never thought that I'm so lucky person. You know, normally luck is not on my side, but it looks like this time it was. You, you, but you, I feel sorry for Russell, he had a uh, very good run, he was running very well. As the championship moves to the Isle of Man for Britain's only pace note international, Russell Brooks is feeling the pressure. Well, very, very tense at the moment. I do before yeah. any rally, but before this one especially so, because really this one is the critical one in the championship. If Hanu took a win on this, there's no way I could win the championship. Um, if we could beat Hanu, then we'd be in with a very good chance indeed. Hanu, you've had a wonderful run of success in British rallies recently. How do you feel about this one? Looks like it's a normal weather again. It's raining, so <laughs> we are quite used to it already. The lead is immediately snatched by Hanu Mikola. Clark is fighting for third place. Tony Pund holds a comfortable second place. John Taylor also contests third. Mikola continues to extend his lead. He's fastest on six of the first nine stages. Russell Brooks' car continues to cause problems, putting him in ninth position. Clark is having a steady run and now lies fifth. Pond is the only driver who can live with Mikola, but the TR7 shows no signs of overhauling the leader. Taylor has engine problems which drop him to fourth as the crews head for Douglas at the end of the first leg. Pond's TR7 starts the second loop. Clark has more experience on pace notes than any other British driver. With half the event gone, he still plays a waiting game. Pond is pursuing Mikola, but even 300 horsepower doesn't seem to be enough. Disaster for Ford. On the second night stage, Mikola crashes. Literally minutes ago, you passed our camera in special stage 10, and here you are standing on Douglas Promenade with the lights in the background. What, what's happened? We uh, got a front wheel puncture, and uh, we went straight off the road. Tony, when last night did you find out that Hanu was out? When we actually saw him beside the road. Yeah. Right, and since then, you've built up a quite incredible 2 minutes, 23 seconds lead, which must make you almost unbeatable. What's going to be your policy today? Well, I think we'll just go quite slowly on the rough stages and try and sort of quick on the open ones where the car's very good. Clark is fastest on half a dozen of the final stages, but he seems to have left his move too late.
Pond leads all the way to the finish. Clark finishes fourth to lead the Sedan Championship. Taylor drives brilliantly to take second.